Today's case is from 21 years ago, a case where an 18-year-old high school girl was found in a river, brutally killed. It's a case that remained unsolved for a long time, and only after some 10 years, clues began to be revealed. It was early in the morning, on a cold winter day, on February 4th, 2001. At the basin of the Tudu River in Namgyeongup, Naju City, South Jeolla Province, the body of a high school girl surnamed Park, who was 17 at the time, was found. With the exception of her stockings, she was found completely naked, laying on her stomach in the water. There was evidence that showed she had been strangled, but the cause of her death was determined to be drowning. Semen, presumed to be from the suspect, was found in Pak's body, as well as the DNA. Police thought it was only a matter of time before they caught the suspect, as they had DNA evidence. They launched a massive investigation. But gradually, it turned into an unsolved case that had many unanswered questions. First off, Pak was living in Gwangju. But her body was found in Naju, and this perplexed investigators because it was more than 15 kilometers away from her home. There was one witness, a 17-year-old boy who said he saw Pak with two men in front of a butcher shop in the Namgu district in Gwangju around 11.30 p.m., the night before the body was found. Even though police had this witness testimony, as well as DNA evidence, they could not find the suspect after more than a month of looking into the case. Also, with 2001 technology, it was impossible to get fingerprints from a body that had drowned. In addition, Pak, who lived in Gwangju, had no connection to the city of Naju. The scope of the police investigation was too extensive, and there was no progress in the case. Many people forgot about this case until one day, some 10 years later. In 2010, the DNA Identification Act was enacted in South Korea, which allowed the creation of a DNA database system in an effort to solve violent crimes. Under this law, police were able to collect DNA samples from people who were charged with violent crimes. And this proved to be an efficient tool to solve cases that remained unsolved for a long time. September 2012 marked a turning point in the case. Detectives found a person that matched the suspect's DNA, which was stored in a database at the Supreme Prosecutor's office. It was a 38-year-old man surnamed Kim who was serving a life sentence at Mukpo Prison after being charged with robbery and murder. A closer look into Kim revealed that he was living near Pak at the time of her death. Many people looked forward to this case finally being solved after so long. The fact that Kim's DNA was found on Pak's body was clear evidence. But Kim had a different story to tell. He told investigators that he and Pak were in love. Kim said they had consensual sexual relations as they loved each other. He said the semen found in Pak's body was his, but it was unjustifiable that he would rape and kill her. Prosecutors eventually failed to indict him due to insufficient evidence. Then, a few years later, the Taiwan law was enacted, which got rid of the 25-year statute of limitations for murder cases. And so, in February 2016, police decided to re-examine the murder case of the high school girl found in Tudu River. During their investigation, they found some new clues. One of the decisive clues that was found was Pak's diary. The word magic had been written in her diary. A woman's period is often referred to as magic in Korea. If, in fact, Pak was on her period, the claim by Kim that they had sexual relations consensually could have little credibility. That's because women typically do not want to have sex when they are on their period. The investigation continued, 
The National Forensic Service analyzed around 100 pictures taken at the scene where Puck's body was found. From those pictures, they found what appeared to be menstrual blood, which is different from other blood stains. Investigators also obtained testimony from Pak's friend that she was on her period until the day before her disappearance. And Kim's behavior right after the death of the girl was also suspicious. Immediately after the girl's body was found, Kim suddenly stole 12 chicken and was sent to prison. Police started to suspect that he committed these crimes to be imprisoned on his own terms and to avoid any other investigation. He was even more suspicious as he disposed of his car right after police investigation started. At the time, there were reports that a car was spotted driving along the Tudu River several times before the girl's body was found. Also, the method of Kim's 2003 pawn shop owner murder and the Tudu River murder case was similar. In both cases, the victim's body was found naked, and both victims were strangled to death. He was already serving a life sentence, and he denied the latter murder case. And he acquired certificates during his imprisonment showing that he tried to get released as he was a model prisoner. Finally, on August 7, 2016, 15 years after the girl's body was found, prosecutors indicted Kim. A decisive testimony was provided at this time. A prisoner who shared a cell with Kim while he was on trial came forward. That prisoner testified that Kim had admitted his crime to him. The prisoner knew how Kim met Pak, why he killed the girl, and every single detail about the case. There were even notes written detailing how Kim will be investigated and what the court process would look like. And this was submitted as evidence. Why did this prisoner reveal all this information? The prisoner said he disclosed it all given how cruel and brutal the crime was. But Kim continued to deny any involvement, saying his prison mate had ill feelings for him and made a false statement. And on top of that, there was a decisive expert analysis which was accepted as evidence in court. On November 7th, a forensic expert said evidence suggested that the murderer killed Pak within two to three minutes after raping her. That's because her menstrual blood and semen found inside her body were not mixed at all. This also meant that it was Kim who had sex with her two to three minutes before her death, and he was likely the one who strangled her to death. Then, how did the court rule on December 26, 2016, prosecutors demanded the death penalty for Kim. Until the very last minute, Kim denied the allegations, saying, I don't remember. On January 11, 2017, the court sentenced Kim to life in prison. Two days later, on January 13, Kim protested and submitted an appeal. But on December 22, the Supreme Court confirmed the original verdict for Kim of life imprisonment. The Tudu River High School girl murder case was unsolvable in the beginning due to a lack of investigative technology at the time. And for a long time, it remained unsolved until a turning point led to a verdict. But in 2009, Pak's father is said to have committed suicide after dealing with the sadness of his daughter's death for years. And so, even though the case has come to a close, it's a sad and regrettable one, as there's no one to be happy about it. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.